Peace and blessings. Welcome, my brothers and sisters, to Sunday Night Prime. I'm here, Father Augustino Torres, along with Brother Angelus and Father Innocent. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. Indeed, Indeed he, is he is risen. What an honor, what a blessing to be with you all here tonight. And as you might have noticed, things are a little bit different on Sunday Night Prime. We are here walking in the footsteps of our beloved Father Benedict Rochelle and Father Andrew. Now, as you know, last year, our beloved Father Andrew took the next step and is, may the Lord have him in his glory. We are very honored to have been taught by, mm. to have been um, uh, illuminated by mm. such incredible men of God, such as Father mm. Benedict and Father Grishel, and us here, <laughs> well, <laughs> we're very honored to be here with you. But a little bit about ourselves, uh, Brother Angelus, uh, share with everybody a little bit about yourself. My brothers and sisters, good evening. My name is Brother Angelus, and I'm one of the triplets. Where we look like we're <laughs> ten, but we're actually triplets from Nebraska. We've been on EWTN before. It's really, really good to be back. I'm actually in my last semester, months away from being ordained to the priesthood. Praise it's God. about <laughs> time. It is about time. <laughs> But we're really, really grateful to be a part of this. And Father, I've had numerous uh, beautiful experiences in my last four years of seminary that I look forward to draw off of. And uh, it's just a beautiful gift to be a religious, to be a Franciscan, and to be able to share the gospel in this way. So I'm grateful to be with you both. We're grateful to be with you, Father Innocent. My name is Father Innocent. I've just been a, I've been a Franciscan Father Renewal for about 10 years. And it's kind of, I can't believe 10 years goes by really fast. I feel like an old man. Um, I've been a priest for two, the past two years, probably been the most blessed of my life. I, um, <clears throat> I get up every day and just love being a friar, love being mm -hmm. a priest. I feel so blessed to be able to live in St. Crispin Friary, kind of where um, our beloved Father Benedict and Father Andrew kind of started out. Mm -hmm. And I work at a homeless shelter for 30 homeless men who are in, in crisis. And I just feel blessed getting up every day to really um, to love them and walk with them. And I'm also the, um, the director of our missionary program. So just a blessing to be able to walk with young men as they're discerning and asking big questions in life. So I just feel really be a blessed friar. Amen. Amen. And myself, my name is Father Augustino. I'm originally from Texas, South Texas. Uh, Way down there. Got to <laughs> mention Texas. And I'm a preacher. Uh, I've been ordained for 10 years. I joined the friars in 99. And I used to be Father Benedict's driver. Uh, what a blessing it was to drive him around to all the many things that, that he had. And one thing we were mentioning before is that we were really blessed to just receive mm. from these men and just learn kind of by osmosis these men of God who loved the church, who protected the church, who fought for the church. And now here we are, kind of like the fruit of their prayers and mm. their service. And we are honored. Uh, to be friars, we are honored to be priests and a future priest very soon. <laughs> Praise God. Thank God. And we're honored that you all are tuning in to us here tonight. So part of our little bit of uh, change up in Sunday Night Prime is that we want to really highlight the wisdom, the timeless wisdom mm. of Father Benedict. Father Innocent, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, like we said, <clears throat> Father Benedict and Father Andrew are giants, right? They they have set the course for us and their wisdom, their words, their, their person speaks. And I think that's what EW10 has captured over the years. And we want to take that wisdom. We want to take their life and, and use it as like a springboard to again, remind this generation, remind this, this culture that these men were inspired and that these men still have something to say and that we want to kind of give it a new language so that their, their memory and their witness can live. Amen, Brother Angelus. You know, guys, I remember, and we were all in this experience, but I remember sitting in this very studio and when they were, they were sitting in these spots um, as postulants and they were sharing their wisdom and they were sh interviewing people. And they, again, these guys, are, we, there's no way, and you all hope you know this, there's no way we can fill their shoes and that's just not possible. Or sandals. Or sandals. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the correction. It's true. But here's the thing, like we have the opportunity to uh, experience their, their life and their wisdom and their witness to to remind this younger generation of that and give it give them hope that living the gospel is possible and that they they pass that on to us that to be faithful to to be joyful to be humble to be radical in this day and age uh, is possible and now it's like yeah we want to we want to remind people that this that these guys were living it and so can we mm. i feel like we're going on a journey like we're, we're just going for it <laughs> like, 
Amen. And, and the intrepid pilgrims that we are, <laughs> yes. we will journey forth. How wisdom is timeless needs not be shared. But that, the wisdom of these men that inspired us, that helped to found our religious order, can be a contribution to our experience today, oh, we believe that's possible too. Don't take my word for it. We have a clip prepared uh, of Father Benedict to share the wisdom for this incredible day, this day of resurrection, this day of Easter. Here's a clip from Father Benedict. In the first letter of Peter, way back in the apostolic times, we hear this st statement. This is 1 Peter 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By His great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ from the dead and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed at the last days. In this you rejoice. That's put very blunt, simply the Christian doctrine of salvation. And I suppose you know that in our society any number of movers and shakers and smart people will laugh at that. But do know that according to a poll taken last year, 92% of the American people think there is life after death with a last judgment, and 86% of the American people think that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. There's a whole lot of people think this, but the media would never let you know it. We actually live in a predominantly Christian country, but we're all asleep, and we let the media, television, radio, particularly the newspapers, the books, the writers, we let them push us around. The vast majority of people hope not simply for life after death, but for a life after death united with Christ. Now why do we, why do we let them push us around? And I'll be quite honest with you, because we're not very good Christians. Jesus says, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. We're lackadaisical Christians. We're mediocre Christians. And uh, that's too bad because when the United States had a vibrant faith, it did well. And right now, that vibrant faith is very, very much missing and we are not doing well. Wow. Uh, praise God. <laughs> no, uh, nothing like a little dose of Father Benedict <laughs> yeah, exactly. for your Easter Sunday. Brothers, is this true? Mm. Are we lackadaisical? Are we being pushed around by all these things? Uh, Father Innocent, what do you think? I think it's true. I think it's true that we sometimes l have lost the fire. Mm. Father Benedict put it in his New Yorker, New Jersey kind of way. We're getting pushed around. I, and I think we feel a bit beat up. But when I listen to his words and listen to his, and his uh, just let it re like reverberate in my heart, we are beat up. But I think there's a deep longing. And that's kind of that's kind of where I my heart is moved right at this moment is that like there's a deep longing for something new, like Saint Peter said for a new, a new hope, a new a new beginning, a new life. And how appropriate that this is on Easter Sunday, is that is this newness possible, brothers? Yeah, yeah we're getting pushed around. We feel a little beat up. Our generation, I won't make an old, I won't make an age joke right now, but our <laughs> our our generation, we, I think we we feel lost. But I think that the, the, the reality that there is a new hope and a new life and a new invitation is real. And I think that's what Father Benedict brought. But that's what we want to tell our, that's what we want to tell our viewers right now. That today, Easter Sunday, this year, this time, that there is newness possible. There is new life possible. New life possible. Uh, Brother Angelus, so many of your conversations with people in all different mm -hmm. walks of life, what are people looking for? What are people longing for? Guys, check this out. Just in this past year, um, it was the first experience I've had as a friar where someone heard the message of Jesus for the first time. Wow. I was in a prison in, in northern Yonkers, and I was talking about forgiveness. And I, I was making the bold proposal that Christi Christianity was unique when it came to forgiveness because of Jesus forgiving his enemies. And when I shared this, this guy came up to me, 
And uh, he had tears in his eyes. He was a tough dude in prison, right? And he was trying to hide his tears because he was in prison and he didn't want to, he didn't want to show his weakness. But he said, how, where can I learn more about this forgiveness? And where can I learn more about this person of Jesus? I've never heard of it before. I've never heard of him before. And I, and the bell rang to go out and um, all these guards started to come in, right? And I gave him my personal Bible and I told him to read the gospel of Luke. And he said, I have, I don't even know where the gospel of Luke's at. And so I showed him and I put bookmarks in and I said, you read this story and next time, next time we'll come and talk about it. And he, I came back in the next week and he had a, the biggest radiant smile on his face and he had tears in his eyes again. And he said, if what I read is true, this changes everything. And what's awesome is that we went, went through the story of Jesus and he was excited about the angel and he was excited about Jesus being born in a manger. And he was excited about the healings and the, the, the pe- healing of people that were possessed. And, and then he, he, he said, and I can't believe that the leaders of the day killed him. And he said, he said, but what I don't get is that you guys say that he was dead, but he's not dead anymore. Hmm. And I said, yeah, that sounds about right. He's not dead anymore. <laughs> and he said, so I can't visit him, like his body somewhere. I'm like, no, <laughs> you can't. But Father, he, he, said, he said that the person of Jesus spoke to him because he realizes that, that the way Jesus overcame what he experienced in his life that he felt he was being called to that as well, that somehow that Jesus' story was now a part of his. And I was like, welcome to what it means to be a Christian. Mm. I, I had a similar experience on an airplane. Always interesting things happen on airplanes, <laughs> airplanes. right? We all so, have so, riders on airplanes. Yeah. So obviously with a habit, it's like, you know, the middle seat isn't the most convenient place to sit for, for <laughs> obvious reasons, I hope. Um, but I had a middle seat and I was thinking, okay, maybe I'm going to like switch my seat with the, with the person next to me. And I, I get there and there was this beautiful grandmotherly looking lady that sounded like she was right out of the nanny. I mean, it was just like, you're like, hi, how are you? Yeah. How are you sitting here? Great. So I sit there, right? And I, I open up my, my breviary to do some prayers. And um, the man next to me asks, excuse me, can I ask you some questions? I'm like, sure. And then he says, I'm a nuclear physicist retired. And in my retirement, I'm dedicating my research on the question of God. If you don't mind, could I ask you some questions? And I'm like, sure. (laughs) So he asked me questions. And you know the scripture that says, and don't worry about what you're going to say. The Holy Spirit's going to give you the words to say. I sounded so smart. (laughs) Uh, He was asking me these questions. It was really a philosophical question. And I couldn't help but remember Father Benedict, who loved speaking with atheists and and loved speaking about science. And I I had all these counter arguments for his questions, but he had a counter argument for my counter argument. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't really get anywhere. and And I just finally said, wow, you know, you are sincerely searching for truth. And I, I'm going to pray for you. And I hope that you will find truth. And so then I open up my, my breviary again. And then he says, excuse me, just one more question. And I'm like, shoot. And, and he said, this made me feel good, pretty good the way he said it. He says, now you're a young man who's obviously intelligent. And I said, no, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously. And, um, and he said, why would you who could do anything you wanted in life, why would you dedicate your life completely to God? And I said, because if it's true that Jesus Christ became man, Mm. lived amongst us, taught us, suffered and died for us, rose from the dead. If this is true, and we know it's true, then this changes everything. everything. And he could not respond to that personal witness of what Christ had done in me. And at that second, the, the, the lady right next to me said, I knew it was going to be very interesting when you sat down. I'm his <laughs> wife. He's always asking questions. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen. This changes everything. And because Christ is alive, we have great hope that no matter what is happening, Christ will have the final answer. But we're going to come right back after a short break. Please, don't go anywhere. We're here with you at Sunday Night Prime. (laughs) 
Peace and blessings. Welcome back to Sunday Night Prime. I'm sure so many of you are coming back or maybe still gathered as families on this Easter Sunday, this Sunday of resurrection. Every Sunday is a Sunday of resurrection, mm. but today is definitely a day where we remember that our lives have been permanently marked by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But Sometimes we feel that, like Father Benedict was telling us, that uh, this message of, of the resurrection uh, comes to us, but sometimes we're not as strong, or maybe we need a little bit of help, or we get pushed around. Father Innocent, uh, Pope Francis has been talking about this as well, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been really, Pope Francis has been really speaking to my heart this Lent, and he, he kind of sets the bar really high, and he says, sometimes we settle for like a spiritual illiteracy. Sometimes our hearts are kind of numb or our minds are, are, are kind of spiritual ears are, are numb because of sometimes the distractions in the world. Mm. And he says, you know, the, the truth of the resurrection, that nothing can, nothing can take that away. The hope of Christ, the fact that he is alive, the fact that he is in the Eucharist and the sacraments and that Jesus is risen from the dead. But what happens, brothers, when that bumps up against this spiritual illiteracy of sometimes even our own hearts? Um, or sometimes the, the hearts of the of young people in our country. What, what it, that, that, I guess that's the question I just want to kind of throw out there, is that what happens when that bumps up against, um, the, the truth of the resurrection bumps up against the spiritual liter illiteracy? Um, Pope Francis sees that that's, a, that's a, a major challenge. I think, brothers, that we get kind of used to our struggle, and we get used to the suffering mm -hmm. we go through, and um, I think this show is about hope and this show is about the resurrection because sometimes whether we're, whatever we're experiencing in our lives, whether it's our, you know, maybe we struggle in our relationships, maybe we struggle with our families, um, maybe we don't know about our future. I work with some of the guys in our vocation office discerning our way of life and I, I oftentimes find that guys aren't operating from a place of trust and hope, but because of the past maybe and because of the current struggles in the culture, that guys are in a place where they lack the, the confidence in God. And they lacked in the, co the confidence of knowing who they are and knowing that God is calling and that God is working and that He will give them everything they need. And so sometimes we just get the, the operating system, kind of like the baseline or the default, kind of a default in our way of life. It's kind of based on our struggle. And what Jesus does is He breaks into that struggling Himself, becoming one of us. And in His suffering and in His struggle, he then shows us the way out. And that's the beauty of the resurrection. And that's the beauty of obedience, the obedience of Jesus on the cross. And that's obviously the beauty of the life of grace. And Jesus says, here's a new way. You're not, you don't have to be stuck there. And when you talk to guys about that message and we talk to people about that message, they're like, whoa, there's a way out. And life does, I don't have to be stuck in my stuff, if you will, but God breaks in and says, yeah, this is the way forward. And this is the way, this is the life that, that I call you to live. And it really changes people. Brother Angelus, you are about to, your life is about to change uh, mm. ontologically. <laughs> I mean, just receive that. I just received that, right? <laughs> um, but like what you said, like it's true. I hear it. I understand it. But I'm putting myself in the place of, of somebody who's like, yeah, like I can hear that up here. But like, mm. but like to live that is something else. Share with us, what are some things that you're working through, maybe going through, struggling with even, like in these days right before your ordination, about that, incorporating that, making that a part of your life? Yeah, so the thing is, is that God is concrete. And God's not abstract. He's not anonymous. And so I've been really reflecting in my own, lay, in my own life lately, just the question. Someone asked me the other day, how does God speak to you? And I wish I could say, man, like, yeah, I have these amazing mystical prayer sessions. <laughs> like, you know, and, and God, I hear his voice and I, and, you Don't know, the, the, an on TV. <laughs> yeah. the angels come <laughs> and it's the alleluias and it's the mystical vision. Um, that's sometimes. Um, <laughs> but it's amazing concretely how God takes care of me through uh, my brothers. How God takes care of me through the witnesses and through the people and through the teachers and through the poor, those we meet on the street. And so... How the resurrection becomes real is that, that redemption and the life that, that Christ gives us is, comes from his witnesses. And how was the resurrection passed on early, early in the gospel? Word of mouth. Word of mouth. And these guys had experiences. Think about the guys on the road to Emmaus. They experienced the risen Christ and they experienced his love. They experienced it in his word. And then they went and told everybody about it. And, 
it's beautiful because that's how the resurrection, that's how this hope, that's how this life is passed on. And are we witnesses, brothers, of this mm. resurrection? And first, like you said, Father, because it has to happen in our own lives. So I really, really believe that we have to create space for the Lord. And I think there's a lot of distractions in the world. And once we create that space and experience that, then we pass it on. And that's, that's how the resurrection I'm feeling it, bro. I was, I'm stirring. I was waiting. You, you, you kind of lingered on that one. Oh, <laughs> no, but I was feeling it because, like, you know, who? It's the, it's a letter of Saint John. It's like I've seen, I've seen him. I've touched him. You know, I've. It, it was his first hand experience of the power of the resurrection. And brothers, I, I mean, this. I don't want this to sound abstract, but when I am struggling and why I'm faced with my own weaknesses, or when I try to help other people who are struggling in the in the depths of addiction, in the depths of longing. Mm-hmm. What do they need? They need a presence. Mm -hmm. They need a presence. And we we know it's the presence of Christ, but the resurrection is communicated by the Christ's presence in one another. Mm -hmm. And so when people ask me all the time in in our homeless shelter, when these guys come in, what do you do? The Cardinal was there recently and he he was visiting the guys and he's like, what's, something's different about this place. And, And we, and we told the Cardinal, we told, we tell people who come and visit us that we are brothers, mm. that we are a presence in these, these, these young men's lives. And they just need someone to be like, hey, listen, you're not alone. And Jesus, the, the power of the resurrection of the many words that that could speak, it is that, that in, the, in our darkness, Jesus says, I am here. The light has come. Mm. If, I might, if I may, Father, we are brothers who know that Jesus is alive. Amen. And even if we don't always say that, but we say that, even if we don't always say that, people know that we're living that and we're we're striving to live that. And even in our struggles, like everybody is going through something. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I know people who are watching, they're going through something. Maybe there's like a family trouble. I just got a call yesterday from from a a couple that they, they said our marriage is about to fall apart we need help, what do we do? And like, they are coming to the church and, and coming to me uh, in the name of God and, and we're bringing them to Jesus because ultimately he is the answer and the fact that he rose from the dead, like the, the way we bring this, it is changing people's lives. It changed ours. And we, we know, Father, that Jesus is not a coping mechanism. Mm. Mm. You're going to throw get, that, can, out, of your, can, you're gonna throw that out at the end of the show? You're going <laughs> to no, throw that out at the Jesus end of the show? Jesus is not a coping mechanism. <laughs> Brothers, the, the resurrection is not a coping mechanism. Mm. It's not one of many things we turn to. Like, okay, yeah, I work out and I take a nap and I read a book and I have a healthy diet and I pray. That is not the, the, the gift of the resurrection. Mm. Jesus is not a coping mechanism. The resurrection is the, the truest thing about truth. And so, brothers and sisters, who you're watching, whoever, our audience. This is the invitation that the resurrection is the, is the gift of life, of new life. And God just doesn't want us to cope with that. He wants us to receive it and receive it anew. I'm receiving it anew. <laughs> no, right. I'm listening to I you right it. here, brother. Uh, I felt that one. I felt that <laughs> I was feeling that one. Easter Sunday, the day of resurrection, uh, my brothers and sisters, what a joy to be with you all here on this Sunday night prime on Easter Sunday. The Lord said, behold, I am doing something new. And he is right now in this place, in our lives, but in your life. Why? Because Jesus Christ is risen. And this, my brothers and sisters, changes everything. We pray and hope that you guys are going to be well. We look forward to seeing more of you every single Sunday. My name is Father Augustino with Father Innocent and Brother Angelus. We are grateful for you. God bless you. May the Lord give you his peace.